So you want to travel to EU with your drone and don't really know what to do. It's not particularly complicated to do so, but there are a few steps that you're required to do to be able to legally fly your drone in one of the 12 member states. Um, it also depends on, of course, uh, the weight of the drone that you carry uh, with you. If it's a sub 250 gram drone, everything is super, super easy. The only thing that you need to do is you need to register yourself uh, as a drone operator in the member state where you arrive uh, first. So that means that you would have to go to the National Aviation Authority's uh, website of the specific country of your, yeah, where, where you, are, you are sort of entering into the EU. So that's basically one thing that you need to do. The other thing that you need to do is that you need to receive an operator ID, which is a part of the application process, which is by the way free. And once you get that, you, can, uh, you need to stick that on top of the drone. You can either do that by printing out a sticker that you put on uh, yeah, the top side of, of the drone, or you can uh, write it with a, yeah, a pen on top of a, <laughs> a waterproof water marker on top of the drone. So it's clearly visible um, in case that something happens. Then of course, uh, really, really good advice is that you make sure to check up on your insurance, that you have uh, the necessary insurance that will cover you in case that you do damage to others. One thing is that if you lose your drone or you damage uh, your own gear, that's one thing that you need to make up uh, with yourself. But if you accidentally get into a situation where you uh, damage property or somebody else, you might run into some financial issues uh, that will uh, and not be so easy to handle. So check up on your personal insurance uh, if you are covered for the country where you're going. In many cases, especially the sub 250 gram drones, at least here where I live, um, you are well covered by your own house insurance and don't need to uh, buy a separate insurance to get the drone covered. But double check, better to be safe than sorry. You know with insurances. <laughs> <laughs> it's not when an accident happens uh, that you want to find out that you're not covered. Then we, are, then we have the drones, the legacy drones um, above 250 grams and we have the C1 to C6 drones uh, under the open uh, category. For those, certain types of education is required. Um, if you are flying a C1 drone, you will probably need, uh, not probably, you will need a A1, A3 drone certificate. C6 and above, you need to have the A2 um, yeah, drone certificate as well on top of your A1, uh, A3. It's basically a requirement for you to take the A2 that you have taken the A1, A3 drone certificate first. Uh, what else do I need to mention? Yeah, of course, I'll make sure uh, I found a really, really good uh, link for all uh, Basically, that summarizes all uh, the drone maps that are available where you can see where you can fly and where you can't fly in the different member states. I saw a really good uh, web page or summary from EASA, um, and I will make sure that I will link that here somewhere in uh, the description below so you can easily get access to this. If you have any questions uh, regarding uh, this, then uh, make sure to pop them in the comments below, and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give a like. If you did like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and I'll be seeing you on the next one.